And so when I came to the consortium, I was 25 years old and I was asked to be a self-advocacy coordinator. Actually, before that, I was asked to support folks who had developmental disabilities um, in determining their level of satisfaction with the support they were getting. And so some of those folks literally didn't talk. And so I used my experience of working with folks around career development stuff and picture career interest inventories. I transferred that idea into a satisfaction survey and worked with people to get a sense of how they were feeling about their supports. And so you can imagine that having that be my entry point to the organization where I got to hear directly from people supported how they felt about their most intimate supports in their home. It was amazing. I mean, I just heard people talk about what they weren't getting, what they wanted, what really worked for them, the staff people who really mattered to them, their family. Um, and I just had this tremendous sense of coming home when I connected. You know, what are you most passionate about still being in this field, still doing this work? I'm really passionate about people having an opportunity to connect around the idea of hope so that folks who experience themselves as different, not because that's how they feel, but that's the experience they've had in the world. On some level, they've gotten those messages, can have that feeling of coming to a space where they feel welcomed, can have relationships where they feel seen and valued and heard. Um, and I also really want to think about sustainable communities in terms of mutuality and engagement of relationships, in terms of jobs that are not draining us to the point where we have nothing left or people have to work two or three or four jobs to make an income um, so that folks can bring their gifts and share them in a way that they feel proud about, um, but also have time and energy for their families, friends, and other things that matter to them. So creating conditions for community, not only for folks we support and are in community with, but for our employees as well. Um, to really look at our commitment toward equity so that we have a workforce that's fully engaged where oppression isn't experienced um, and when there are missteps, we can have an honest conversation. Um, we can self-examine the areas that we can improve upon uh, and that we grow together as a community and that the connections deepen as a result. You know, what is the value of your lived experience in terms of the people you support? The various roles I have have informed my perspective such that when it, we're making a decision, I think about how it's going to impact employees based on their experiences. I think about how they might be viewing something based on their program or community they're identifying with or the nature of their work. Um, I've gotten to know folks we support on really um, uh, deep levels over time. And so I also think about them in making decisions. And my approach and style is an inclusive or facilitative leader. So creating the conditions for people to come together and really listen what the community is saying that it wants. And then how can we meet those needs in the most um, cooperative you know, empowered way, uh, rather than we're going to solve it and we're going to decide what's what's right and then we'll change if we get feedback. So what does it mean to be a learning organization? What does that mean to you? When I think about being a learning organization, really self-examination, self-reflection, and being open to new ideas and that we're evolving and changing, sometimes regressing as a society. And so uh, if I look at the consortium as kind of a microcosm of what's going on in our larger society, then really naming what's going on and having that opportunity to pull it apart. Uh, because in the absence of that, things like consumerism and dogma, you know, are pushed on us. And so in response to that, rather than pushback, perhaps we're advocating for changes, but really reflecting on consciously deciding who we want to be in relationship, what are the values that are important to us, uh, and holding ourselves accountable to that. I think that's what makes us a learning organization, is really being open to 
new ideas and adapting and examining um, and staying awake. You know, one of my favorite movies is The Matrix because look what happens when you fall asleep. Like, how can we stay awake to our privilege, to issues around equity, to social justice, um, in the face, again, of these larger national concerns that are going on that don't seem to be getting talked about in any consistent way where we're evolving in our thinking as a society. To be able to create space for that at the consortium, I feel like it's a huge opportunity.